Can profit be a mission? Many mission statements contain a reference to maximising shareholder return. This approach doffs its cap to the legal structure of most businesses, which puts an obligation on managers to run the business for the benefit of investors. It begs a question. If your enterprise takes the form of a corporation, is your core mission ever more than maximising a return for your investors? To answer this, we need to think through some economics. I see two problems that prevent me wholeheartedly supporting the idea that profit is its own mission. One's to do with time, and the other with limits to management skills. The time issue is simply that profit has to be measured relative to time. In the short run, you can always increase profit by reducing your investment in the future. But if you don't invest for the future, then the profit will be short-lived. Some economists believe that short-term individual profit maximisation can produce an optimal equilibrium in the economy. But having reached an intellectual hegemony in the 1980s, this view is in decline because experience has shown us that while the economy benefits from long-term investments in things like infrastructure and production capacity, individual perceptions of risk impede most people from investing in long-term assets. Our individual time preference for money does not reflect our collective interest. While we must keep an eye on short-term efficiency, we also need some longer-term motivation that keeps dragging us into the future. Simple competition doesn't seem to do it. Many successful entrepreneurs intuitively know this. They take calculated risks that the rest of us would avoid. They tend to express their lifelong ambition in non-monetary ways, usually in terms of somehow always being the best at what they do. These entrepreneurs express mission in terms other than profit, although they clearly believe that achieving their goals will also maximise their personal wealth. The practical issue arising from an over-reliance on the profit motive is in how you cascade motivation through your enterprise. Of course you can relate people's pay to profit, but bonuses are crude influences that often produce suboptimal behaviour. How often do salesmen take bad orders? Accountants misinterpret long-term contracts, or retailers recognise income early and cost late, simply in order to hit short-term bonus targets. It's been in the news. We've seen some spectacular examples in banking where traders have maximised their income, leaving their employers existentially weakened. I've always liked the saying that, if you set me stupid objectives, don't be surprised when I behave stupidly. For stupid, you could insert greedy. So even if you're a good enough manager in a simple enough business to set effective bonus structures, your work will never end. As the external world changes, you'll have to adapt the incentives you offer. And each time you do, you have to negotiate with your employees. And if your competitor is dumber than you, they may offer your employees easier targets. If people only follow the money, your employees show no loyalty and move freely between you and your competitor. At best, Offering purely financial motivations can drive short-term alignment between the motivation of the individual and that of the enterprise, but it's crude, error-prone and hard to sustain. In the final analysis, motivating people purely through money is a form of legal conspiracy between the person offering a bung and the person accepting it. And conspiracy theory says that a conspiracy only lasts until one conspirator can benefit from cheating on the other. By contrast, if people engage in a long-term common cause, there is no conspiracy. Rather, there is a mutual interest in supporting each other. This makes for more sustainable relationships. In truth, much depends on the character of your enterprise. If success requires that you build sustainable competency, I suggest the simple pursuit of profit provides too little sense of mission to glue a team together. By contrast, if you can close deals quickly, withstand some employee churn and can access a ready pool of labour, money probably does it. But if it's that simple, you may have stiff competition for your labour. In counselling caution about defining your mission in purely monetary terms, I'm not suggesting that money isn't a good and necessary motivation. Most commercial businesses are just people coming together to earn a living. In Britain, the clue's in the name. It's called a company. If these people can't feed themselves and their families, they can't work on the enterprise. Equally, few people begrudge someone who has created something good for the world being rewarded for what they do. To reuse the now famous quote from Google's corporate values, you can make money without doing evil. So it's good to make money. It helps motivate. In some cases, it's all the motivation needed. But in many enterprises, money alone is not enough. If your enterprise depends on individual loyalty 
or complex cooperations, you will struggle to sustain it by purely financial rewards. And if you do, you will have given your employees the negotiating strength to disproportionately drive up their rewards, as we've seen in banking. If you want to share your tank with Gordon Gecko, you be my guest, but you may just get eaten alive.